look at here. I'm just going to give us an equation. And we know the difference over there that, that um, Caleb was asking about, the equations and inequalities. The equation will have the equal sign. The inequality will have a greater than or less than sign. So we're going to start off here with just an equation. It says the absolute value of 3x minus 4 is equal to 11. Okay, so what we got to know when we're solving an absolute value function, we know that absolute value is the distance you are from 0 on the number line, right? So we could be to the left of 0 or we could be to the right of 0. So when we write, when we have an equation or an inequality to solve, we got to account for both of those options. Most people always get one of these answers right. They'll just drop the bars and write 3x plus 4 is equal to 11 and they'll solve that equation. That'll be half of it because it could also be equal distance on the other side of zero. So what we have to do, you're going to, anytime there's an absolute value problem, you're going to write two problems from it. You get the first one like I did just there. You just drop the bars and don't change anything else. You get the second one by dropping the bars, keeping what was in the bars the same, and making everything on the other side the opposite. So our second equation says 3x plus 4 equals negative 11 because we made everything over there the opposite. Now when we get to an inequality in a minute, a greater than or less than sign, we'll have to flip the sign. But you don't flip an equal sign because an equal sign was the same no matter which way it turns. You can flip an equal sign 17 times and it would still look the same, right? It doesn't change, right? You know, following that? Okay, so we got two equations to solve. You'll solve them both the same way, but you'll get a different answer here. I'm going to, got four subtracted. So I'm going to add it. So I got 3x is 15. I've got my x being multiplied by 3. So I'm going to divide. So on this side, we got x is 5. Okay, very good. Now on the other side, we're going to do the same stuff. We're going to add 4, but we're adding it to something different, so our result will be different. We're adding it to a negative 11. Negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. And then we would divide by 3. So we would get negative 7 thirds. Now yesterday when we were doing the inequalities, we had these things, you're fine. We had these things on number lines to graph. So we're going to look at this on a number line, but this one's a little bit easier because it's equal. When it's equal, you don't have shading. What kind of mark do we have on the number line if it's just equal to that number? Just a point. Just a point. Good thing. Just a point, a dot, whatever you want to call it. So my number line, I need to make sure I put them in numerical order. The negative one would go on the left of it. Negative seven-thirds would have a point. Five would have a point, and that would be it. Now when we were doing the less thans and greater thans yesterday, we also wrote an interval notation. That interval notation, it's called that because it covers an interval. It covers the areas you shaded. We didn't shade anything here. We don't have an interval to cover. So we're just going to write our answers in set notation with those, that was a bad one, with those braces, negative seven-thirds, five. I put them in numerical order. That makes common sense. So that would be our answer. Those are some of the better braces I drew, but it kind of looks like a man making a kissy face. I don't see that. I see it. Alright. Pretty simple on that. Okay, now. Not on the equal ones, but on the greater than or less than ones we will. Alright, so I want to look at uh, one with the inequality. Everybody alright? Glad it's Friday. Me too. I'm going to use the same problem, the same numbers. I got absolute value of 3x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 11. We're going to wear those numbers out on this today. We're going to use them every chance we get. Alright, I told you a second ago, got to write two problems. We get the first one by dropping the bars and writing everything like it is. We get the second one by dropping the bars. An equality sign doesn't look the same, so we got to flip it and we make everything over there the opposite, so our 11 becomes opposite. All right, now I left some space in between my two problems, and it has to do with what we talked about yesterday, unions and intersections, more specifically to your taste, and and or. Remember those two words? So i got to know whether or not this is an and or an or. 
There's a foolproof way every time, and it depends on how your signs started. And this cracks me up because last period, I mean last year, Algebra 3 came up with this. If it starts, and this works, this is true, this has worked several times. If it starts as a greater than or a greater than or equal to, it's always going to be an or. So I'm going to go ahead and write an or in here. If it starts as a less than or less than or equal to, it's always going to be an and. Bless you. And what I said, the thing they came up with how to remember that, because I was forgetting it, and I was having to go back and look it up in the book. How to remember that? Great tour. Great tour has the or in it. Less than, than, set rhymes with than. So that's how they remember that. And it, it works out pretty good. I've remembered it like that since then, but it cracked me up that they thought of that. I don't know. The things y'all think of, I guess. Okay. Going to get the same two answers that we did a second ago because it's the same two things. Our answers, our final product's just going to look different because we got to put it on a number line and we got to put it in interval notation. So we'll go ahead here out of four. You, you've done this, you know you're getting a 15, then you know you're dividing by three and getting a five. That's not new. Let's start with point five. Let me erase that so it doesn't look like a point five. Okay, we know we're going to get a negative seven thirds on the other side, but I'll go through the process again. So we've got 3x is less than or equal to negative 7 divided by 3, and i got x is less than or equal to negative 7 thirds. Okay, now we're to yesterday's stuff. We've got two pieces of inequality. We've got to put that on a number line. We've got to write it in interval notation. So my number line, I'm going to just go with 1. You know, yesterday we started off putting them on 2 and then merging them together. But I think we're, we can go on one now. Negative 7 thirds is smaller, so I need to put it on the left. 5 is bigger, so I need to put it on the right. Okay, this piece right here where my mouse is. X is greater than or equal to 5. Greater than or equal to gets a bracket, and it goes to the right. Greater goes to the right. So that's looking like that. This piece here, X is less than or equal to negative 7 thirds. Bracket less than goes to the left. So that's looking like that. Now, does that make sense that my shading went that way after we put that oh, after we put that or word up in there? I'm trying to fix it. There we go. Does that make sense? It should. Remember yesterday I, I talked about most of the time or graphs go out to the outside, right? You remember that? And then we got it. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's write our interval notation now. To the left, it goes forever, so negative infinity. Then it stops with a bracket at negative 7 thirds or union with a bracket 5 and forever to the right is infinity. So I just hooked up with yesterday's stuff added the absolute value phase to it. U means union, which means it, or. So it could go to the left of negative 7 thirds, or it could go to the right of 5. And if it's an upside down U, it means intersection. It means it's got to be in both of them. And. Alright. We're going to use that same base again, the 3x, the 4, and the 11, but I'm going to change the sign on you. So this one says absolute value of 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 11. All right, so we got to write our two problems because it's absolute value, so we're going to draw up our bars, write it like it is. There's problem one. Problem two, we're going to draw up our bars, flip your sign, and make everything on the other side the opposite. Okay, is this one going to be an and or an or? And, good chase, because it's less than, so I'm going to put an and in there, which that's going to make a big difference on our graph. Okay? You know the answers to these. We've solved them. This is our third time, so you know that this one's 5, and look which way the sign's facing, so we know we're going to get a 5 there with that sign, right? I've solved this one three times now. I know it's negative 7 thirds. Look which way the sign's facing. So I'm going to have that there with my negative 7 thirds. Is that okay if I just pull those five and seven thirds from the other problems? I hope mm -hmm. so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we're ready to go to our number line. Negative seven thirds is smaller, so it's going to go to the left. 
There's five. Now this time my signs are doing different things. Okay, this one says x less than or equal to five. Less than five goes to the left of it. So bracket, because it's the equal, I'm going to start coming that way. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go crazy and scribble on my whole line yet. Because I know a little bit, and you do too, you know that this is an and, and you know that your weird math teacher said most of the time ands have a section in the middle shaded. So that's what I'm anticipating here. So I don't want to scribble on my whole line and have to go erase it later. So I'm just getting ready. Okay? X is greater than or equal to negative 7 thirds. Greater than negative 7 thirds goes to the right. So it would be going like that. So look, your crazy math teacher got one right finally. It is that middle section that's shaded. I need to follow you to the high school office. Paris Patterson, Ellie, Bear, and J.P. Wells. Thank you. Okay, that'd be it. No biggie, no biggie. Give us some new numbers finally. We've exhausted those. This says absolute value of 3a plus 2 plus 4 is equal to 15. So I'm introducing something a little bit new to you on this. It's just an equal sign. So like I was telling Keston a little bit earlier, we're not going to worry about graphing this because it's just an equal sign. There'll just be points on the number line. But we still got to solve it. And there's an absolute value in it, so there's still going to be more than one problem that we got to write. But there's something new with this one. Everybody notice what's new with this one? Good, the plus four. And this is Coach Wright's technical mathematical words. There's extra junk on the left side. I know, it's big, big stuff there. With the absolute value, when we start solving an absolute value function equation, we need to isolate it. We need nothing over there but the absolute value. So right now I got plus four, that's extra junk I need to get rid of. So that's going to be our first step. Okay, how do we do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we got absolute value of 3a plus 2 is equal to 11. Okay, now we've got it to what we started off with. We got it down to, to simplify, no extra junk, plus it. We can start solving it. Not yet, but yes. First thing I gotta do is write my two equations. So I'm gonna have 3a plus 2 equals 11, just wrote it like it was without the bars. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna have 3a plus 2 is negative 11. Very good. Now Baylor's ready to start solving. He said I need to subtract 2, so we're gonna do that. On this side, that would give me 3a is 9. Uh huh. Which gets you a is three. Okay. Moving over to the left, I got to make that same move Baylor told me again and subtract two. So it gets me three a is negative thirteen. Not a pretty whole number this time, is it? I'm just going to leave it in fraction form. Negative thirteen thirds. Yes, negative 4, 1 third or negative 4.3 repeating. you got to do it. All right, I'm not going to mess with the number line since it's just the, the points on the number line, but I am going to write it in set notation. Put your smaller one first. And me, myself, I wouldn't mark it wrong if you put the 3 first, but it is mathematically correct to put the smaller first, so... Go ahead and do that. Okay. Got another one we got to look at. We ready? Yes, ma'am. Is that a 13 on the top? Yeah, sweet. That's an ugly third, negative 13 over 3. Okay, 
This one says absolute value of 4R minus 1 is equal to the absolute value of 3R plus 5. Okay, so we've added another new phase here. We've got absolute values on both sides. Okay, this doesn't matter. We're still, the plan of attack is still the same. We're still going to write two equations. We're still going to get our first one just by dropping the bars and writing everything like it is. So we're going to write 4R minus 1 equals 3R plus 5. There's our new first equation. Okay, like I just told you, the plan of attack is still the same. So for my other one, drop the bars. If this were an inequality sign, I would flip it, but it's not. Make everything on the other side the opposite. Okay, so I'm taking a baby step here. Make everything, <coughs> bless you, make everything on the other side the opposite. I put a negative out in front, baby step, but you could probably skip that if you want to. You know that we're going to have to distribute that in there, right? Okay, let me, let's solve over here first. What do you want to do first in this one over here, Hayden? Add one. Okay, add one. So I got 4R equals 3R plus 6. So now Hayden doesn't have a choice. What's he going to do, Caitlin? Okay, 3R. Yep. So we know R is 6 on that side. And now before I start solving on the right, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative and rewrite that. So I'm going to have 4R minus 1 is equal to negative 3R minus 5 because we made everything over there the opposite. Hey, Keston, what do you want to do first there, sweetie? Plus one. Add one, same thing Hayden had. So 4R is equal to negative 3R minus 4. Okay, what would Keston have to do now, Grace? Not yet. Wait, wait. Wait. Add 3R. Add 3R. Oh, yeah. I Sorry. knew you knew. That's okay. Brain fart late Friday afternoon. I knew you knew. So that would get us 7R is negative 4. So our last step would be to divide by 7. So we're going to say negative 4 sevenths. Okay, this was an equal sign, so I'm not going to stress over the points on the number line, but negative, whoa, that was a bad brace. Negative 4 sevenths. Try harder on this one. That's a better one. And 6. All right, all, what was that, five? All five of those problems, maybe, I think, so far, have been what would be considered the common, the normal type. we got to look at some special cases. You know, there's always special cases. Oh, we got okay. some special cases in here, mainly me. But we always got them. So we got to look at those. Okay, ready? All right, this one says absolute value of 6x plus 7 is equal to negative 5. Alright, I told you we had, this is a special type of problem. So you need to have your detective hat on already looking for something that's fishy. Does anybody notice anything fishy with this? Very good, Kirsten. Absolute value is the distance you are from zero on a number line. Distance is always a positive number. So I'm trying to, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, I'm going to get a positive number here, right? No matter what I plug in for X, I take the absolute value of it and I get a positive number. But this says it equals a negative number. Does a positive number ever equal a negative number? No way, Jose. No solution. Good. Mm -hmm. well, I like that one. Yep. Good now, the equal sign is what made that be key because it could have said less or greater than and you could you would work it if it said greater than that's what we're going to throughout this scenario here but if it said less than yeah. it depends it depends on how what the number is if it was that yeah that would be no solution also okay. yes all right another strange situation here we're going to try to cover them all this one has to do with something different i got absolute value of one quarter x minus three is equal to zero. Okay. Is this possible? Can you get an absolute value of zero? Yeah. yeah. Absolute value of zero is just zero. Right? So this is possible. 
Good. So we are going to have to uh, attack this here. I'm going to drop my bars and write it like it is. But here's what makes this different. I don't have two equations to write. Because usually we write our second equation by making everything on the other side the opposite. What's the opposite of zero? Zero. It's just zero, and ha zero is neutral, right? Yeah. So I don't have another equation to write. I'm only going to get one answer on this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve. Add your three. A quarter x is equal to three. X be multiplied by a quarter, so we're going to divide by a quarter. Dividing by one fourth is the same as multiplying by four. You do get twelve, like Mr. Ferguson said. Wow. You're doing good. I know we're going quick. This is this is not difficult. This is stuff that's easily forgotten, though. So I hope you're making some good notes on it. Still looking at some some strange ones. Okay, still on the special cases. Everybody got what you need on that one. I got an absolute value of x is greater than negative one. Okay, absolute value of x is greater than negative one. What kind of number am I going to get when I take the absolute value of any number? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. No matter what, good, Kaylee, I'll plug in here for x, it'll be a positive number, right? If I put negative 5, absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. If I put 5, absolute value of 5 is 5. So no matter what, I'm going to get a positive number, unless I chose 0, but that's 0, is absolute value of 0. So am I going to come up with any number that that trumps this? What are the all round numbers? Very good. No matter what number I put in, the absolute value of it is bigger than a negative one, right? So, like Zane said, I could write all real numbers. Wouldn't it be that way with any negative number? Like yes. Yes. If, and, hold on. Yes. Um, infinite solutions, I got something else to say about what Zane was talking about. Infinite solutions, interval notation will be negative infinity to infinity. Okay, it's about the, all the ways I can think to write it. Now Zane said any negative number on the right side, and that's correct. But we had a negative number on the, on the right side a second ago, and we put no solution. So what changed that we went from no solution to infinite solutions? It said it was equal to. Very good. Earlier, we had an equal sign there. You can't equal a negative number. You can't be smaller than a negative number, but you better be, but your boots, you're bigger than a negative number, right? Okay, so pay attention to your signs on that. Okay, I got two more. Hang in there. Two more. Absolute value of t minus 10 minus 2 is less than or equal to negative 3. All right, Coach Wright's technical math words. We got extra junk. Okay, so we got to get rid of that. The 2 is being subtracted, so we're adding it. So the absolute value of t minus 10 is less than or equal to negative 1. We've talked about this scenario already. Am I going to be able to perform an absolute value operation and get an answer that's no. smaller than negative 1? Mm -mm. No. So what do I put? No solution. Why did I not initially put that? Because you can have it. Good. After I added that extra junk, it could have turned out to be a positive number over here, right? So I had to do move my extra junk to make sure it stayed negative. Okay? Alright. One more and then you'll do one on your own. This one says absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to zero. And this was one that will trick people if we're not careful. Y'all focus right here. We know that we can't have an absolute value and be less than zero, right? Because that would be a negative and that's not possible. That would be no solutions. But 
This one put the bar underneath it. Can we have an absolute value that's equal to zero? Yes. yes. So we do have some work to do on this. So we are going to drop the bars and write a problem. Do I need to write the other problem? No. No, because you can't have a negative zero. I can't have a negative zero, right, but what about shading on a number line? Can I go, this one would be going to the left of it. Can't I also go to the right of it? Yes. So we are going to have to flip that sign there. Okay. Now, answer's going to look the same. You're going to subtract 2. So we got x is less than negative 2. Subtract 2. Greater than or equal to negative 2. All right. This problem started off with a less than sign, which means this is an intersection, right? This is an and, right? Can I be, don't worry about the bar yet, I'm just talking less than, greater than, not the bar, not the equal to. Can I be smaller than negative 2 and bigger than negative 2? No. No. It's, it's impossible. If negative 2 is here, it's impossible for me to be there and there. I can't do it, right? Can't be smaller and bigger. But these have both got the equal bar underneath them. Could I be negative 2 and <coughs> be negative 2? Yes. Yes. Yes, so because of that equal bar, this is possible, but my only answer, the only place where I can be in both places at once is when I'm at negative 2. So it's pretty much just the equal? Yep. All right, want to let you try one. It'll be more than normal kind. I'm going to take you back to a normal one to look at. Those were all the special cases. I like those yeah, because they're a lot of common sense, and you, you're good at that. Yeah. Some people not that's so all much. Oh, I got. That'll get you a long way. Yeah, you should. I'm No, you're not. That's not what Ruby told me. Who told me? Did you listen to him? Yes. I'll listen to everyone. You are so. Thank you. Alright, just gave you an equal sign so you don't have to worry about shading or anything. Got two answers. Solve it. Go. Talk to your, your huddle there. We got some solos, but... another minute. I got it. One thing I haven't said yet I want to say real quick now. I left the space between those two equations that I just wrote when I wrote my two equations. Would this be an intersection or a union? Would it be an and or an or? Or. Good. Who said or? Good Hayden. Why? Very good. If I'm thinking about this on a number line, I don't know what answers you're going to get. I haven't worked it out yet. But let's pretend you get 5 and 9. Can I be on 5? Can I be 5 and 9 both? No, I'm either 5 or I'm 9. So an equal sign is an or. We don't get bogged down with that a lot, but technically it is an or. Okay, let's solve these two. What would you do first? Yeah, add the 1. Add the 1. Okay, I know that's a 12, so I know that that one is a 6. Good. Add the 1 over here. 
So we got 2x is negative 10. So x is negative 5. Okay. Write your answer in numerical order. Make a good habit out of that. So it'll be negative 5, 6. How'd we do? Well, good. Everybody at Caleb's table should have had it. We'll we, did, back yeah, here. we did. Good, good. Yeah, we did. You don't have it. You already. You don't have it back here, Chase. It's your group. No, I didn't. Oh, what did you do wrong? I just put that in your eye. He's on a bathroom. Yeah, but you understand it. Ah, I didn't. Now I know it. <laughs> okay, so here's what's on the horizon for us. Monday we're out of school, we finally made it to a holiday. Normally the school year falls so that you go two weeks and you get Labor Day. We had bad dates this year. We had to tough it out three weeks. But, but we yeah, we made it. We get a holiday on Monday. Tuesday, gonna have an assignment for you over all this linear stuff that we've been doing. And then Wednesday we'll start talking about review and have a linear test at the end of the week. Okay? Everybody good? What time do we switch classes? 55. We've still got, no, we don't have an exit question, and you still have over 10 minutes. So you're, you're welcome. You don't act like a hoodlum. Thank you. Probably going to regret this.